No, it's not too late. You're not to say that. I love you more than anything in the world. Oh, please, Wax, and kiss me, please. No. It's no use. It's too late. Oh, we can't lose each other now. We must be together always. No secrets, no shadows. We only have a few days. A few hours. Maxim, why didn't you tell me before? Yeah, you did sometimes, but you never seemed close enough. How could we be close when I knew you were always thinking of Rebecca? How could I even ask you to love me when I knew you loved Rebecca still? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Whenever you touched me, I, I knew you were comparing me with Rebecca. Whenever you looked at me or spoke to me or walked with me in the garden, I knew you were thinking, this I did with Rebecca, and this, and this. Oh, it's true, isn't it? You thought I loved Rebecca? You thought that? I hated her. Oh, I was carried away by her. Enchanted by her, as everyone was. And when I was married, I was told I was the luckiest man in the world. She was so lovely. So accomplished. So amusing. She's got the three things that really matter in a wife, everyone says. Breeding, brains, and beauty. And I believed them. Completely. But I never had a moment's happiness with her. She was incapable of love, or tenderness, or decency. You didn't love her. You didn't love her. Do you remember that cliff where you first saw me in Monte Carlo? Well, I went there with Rebecca on our honeymoon. That was when I found out about her, four days after we were married. She stood there laughing, her black hair blowing in the wind told me all about herself. Everything. Things I'll never tell a living soul. I wanted to kill her. It would have been so easy. You remember the precipice? I frightened you, didn't I? You thought I was mad. Perhaps I was. Perhaps I am mad. It wouldn't make for sanity, would it? Living with the devil. I'll make a bargain with you, she said. You'd look rather foolish trying to divorce me now after four days of marriage. So I'll play the part of a devoted wife, mistress of your precious Mandalay. I'll make it the most famous showplace in England, if you like. And people will visit us and envy us and say we're the luckiest, happiest couple in the country. What a grand joke it'll be. What a triumph. I should never have accepted her dirty bargain. But I did. I was younger then and tremendously conscious of the family honor. <sighs> family honor. She knew that I'd sacrifice everything rather than stand up in a divorce court and give her away, admit that our marriage was a rotten fraud. You despise me, don't you? As I despise myself, you can't understand what my feelings were. Can you? Of course I can, darling. Of course I can. Well, I kept the bargain, and so did she, apparently. Oh, she played the game brilliantly. But after a while, she began to grow careless. She took a flat in London, and she'd stay away for days at a time. Then she started to bring her friends down here. I warned her, but she shrugged her shoulders. What's it got to do with you, she said. She even started on Frank. Poor, faithful Frank. Then there was a cousin of hers, a man named Favell. Yes, I know him. Came the day you went to London. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't like to. I, I thought it would remind you of Rebecca. Remind me? <laughs> As if I needed reminding. Favell used to visit her here in this cottage. I found out about it, and I warned her that if he came here again, I'd shoot them both. One night, 
when I found that she'd come back quietly from London. I thought that Favelle was with her. And I knew then that I couldn't stand this life of filth and deceit any longer. I decided to come down here and have it out with both of them. But she was alone. She was expecting Favelle, but he hadn't come. She was lying on the divan, a large tray of cigarette stubs beside her. She looked ill, queer. Suddenly she got up, started to walk toward me. When I have a child, she said, neither you nor anyone else could ever prove it wasn't yours. You'd like to have an heir, wouldn't you, Max, for your precious Mandalay? And she started to laugh. How funny. How supremely, wonderfully funny. I'll be the perfect mother, just as I've been the perfect wife. No one will ever know. It ought to give you the thrill of your life, Max, to watch my son grow bigger day by day, and to know that when you die, Mandalay will be his. She was face to face with me. One hand in her pocket, the other holding a cigarette. She was smiling. Well, Max, what are you going to do about it? Aren't you going to kill me? I suppose I went mad for a moment. I must have struck her. She stood staring at me. She looked almost triumphant. Then she started toward me again, smiling. Suddenly she stumbled and fell. When I looked down, ages afterwards, it seemed, she was lying on the floor. She struck her head on a heavy piece of ship's tackle. I remember wondering why she was still smiling. And I realized she was dead. But you didn't kill her. It was an accident. Who would believe me? I lost my head. I just knew I had to do something, anything. I carried her out to the boat. It was very dark. There was no moon. I put her in the cabin. When the boat seemed a safe distance from the shore, I took a spike and drove it again and again through the planking of the hull. I opened up the sea cocks and the water began to come in fast. I climbed over into the dinghy and pulled away. I saw the boat heel over and sink. I pulled back into the cove. It started raining. Maxim, does anyone else know of it? No, no one except you and me. We must explain. It's got to be the body of someone you've never seen before. No, they're bound to know her. Her rings, bracelets she always wore. They'll identify her body. Then they'll remember the other woman. The other woman buried in the crypt. If they find out it was Rebecca, you must simply say that you made a mistake about the other body. That the day you went to Edgecombe, you were ill. You didn't know what you were doing. Rebecca's dead. That's what we've got to remember. Rebecca's dead. She can't speak. She can't bear witness. She can't harm you anymore. We're the only two people in the world that know, Maxim. You and I. I told you once that I'd done a very selfish thing in marrying you. You can understand now what I meant. I've loved you, my darling. I shall always love you. But I've known all along that Rebecca would win in the end. No, no. She hasn't won. No matter what happens now, she hasn't won. 